Well, hello, everyone. It's uh, really great to be here today. I want to thank my colleague, Wally Metz, for putting together this conference and all his outstanding faculty, Paul Pat and Robert Wood, and his uh, exciting staff, Terry Reynolds and Becky and some of the others. Uh, Ryan is working this equipment. Uh, I know there's a lot of unsung heroes behind the scenes. So thank you, Wally, for putting this together. I'm here. My colleagues are the great cloud of witnesses over our shoulder that we can't see. But I'm joined by Dr. J. Dean Farmer, who's the chair, and my colleague, we call him Hollywood, P. Kenny, filmmaker, two outstanding friends from Bowie's Creek, which is not too far from Raleigh, North Carolina. So we want to uh, talk about some of the themes here in this conference, which has the name Forum 415, reference to Ephesians, and we have uh, the rhetoric of faithfulness and the image and the word. So that's three titles. I'm putting it on my Vita three times. I'm going to get a lot of mileage out of this one. So let's uh, talk a little bit about our program, which has to do with logos. And I'm going to pay, play a bit of a tape. So we want to talk about signs. Signs, signs, everywhere there's signs. They're part of our culture, and they're hard to deny. In many cases, we have commercial messages. We're all familiar with uh, the Bluebird, the Twitter brand and the swoosh with Nike and this uh, logo that has embedded in it the arrow between the E and the X. I'm sure you've seen it before. Very clever. We uh, wanted to do something clever. Well, we're a nonprofit. We're a Christian university, Baptist university. Baylor is considered number one in the nation, world, as a Baptist university. And believe it or not, Campbell University near Raleigh is uh, in some circles, considered number two, Baptist University. But we do have a Christian identity, and we wanted to create a logo that captures some of our faith, plus who we are as a Department of Communication Studies. We were tempted to go to hipster.com, which, hipsterlogo.com, which you could go to, and it has six easy steps. Just walk your way around there, you pick a circle, you add some, some uh, other uh, qualities, and before you know it, you have you have a logo, and it says here, you don't even need a concept. So that, that probably could have worked, but we tried to be a little more thoughtful about it, and I'm going to um, turn it over to our invisible friends in Bowie's Creek to talk a little bit about the theoretical uh, considerations. So I think Pete Kenny is going to lead us off, and then Dr. Farmer is going to take over. So we're looking at a, uh, a, a uh, icon of I.A. Richards' uh, a triangle, if uh, I'm not sure you can see that in Bowie's Creek, if that helps you at all, friends. Michael, thank you very much. I uh, appreciate that. Um, it's good to be here by a voice, sorry, aka Hollywood can't get the video going, but uh, we're doing our best to keep that. won't see us anyway. Tag yesterday. Yeah, I'm in my pajamas, so we're, we're comfortable back here at Bowie's Creek. But Michael, thank you for that uh, kind introduction. We are talking about um, uh, I.A. Richards and, and what it means to understand what a sign is between what is imagined in our mind, what is actually written down, words, icons, and sounds, versus real world objects, and how there can be some miscommunication there if we're not careful in how we present something, in particular a logo or a word when we're trying to promote um, ourselves or an object of business or what have you because the general public tends to look at um, meaning and create meaning into meaning and they kind of get a little bit confused with that uh, in some respects but past experience in their lives may um, bring a joyful memory, may bring a sad memory or something to that effect that can uh, skew a little bit. So, Dealing with this, you've got to be extremely careful. And so, with no further ado, I want to pass this over to Dr. Dean Farmer here. He's going to talk a little bit more about that. Uh, you know, building on, uh, I guess, the obvious Richard's meme track there, but, but going towards more of the semiotics direction, um, you know, back in the 50s on, on the continent, uh, Mark sort of created a stir when he talked about the meaning of visual 
political signs uh, and mythologies. Uh, basically, he, he came out and said that, you know, and realizing that seemingly straightforward signs that we think about uh, can communicate on a, another connotative level that reinforces ideological meanings. Uh, signs, Mark said, uh, carry ideological baggage uh, and that, you know, that society will create a mythic status of signs that the sign uh, can go without saying, the logo, you know, in our case, can go without saying, uh, that myths that can affirm a, a status quo, or talked talk about the status quo, uh, the things that are natural, inevitable, and eternal. Um, David Scutner and his colleagues at Ohio U uh, did a semiotic study back in the early 90s, um, talking about and trying to deconstruct the signs in the advertising in uh, Michael Dukakis's uh, 1988 presidential campaign, and talked about why they, they uh, interpreted that campaign was an abstract failure, um, because the advertisers were trying to be very, very straightforward uh, they made no attempt, really, to connect uh, to any mythic power of the sun. Uh, and the Scutners and his colleagues' uh, arguments back 20 years ago correctly you know, anticipate society's continued postmodern term that we are, you know, the high and low culture uh, really uh, is a thing as consumers, and in our case, as we're building um, this uh, uh, current uh, logo and sign we're talking about here in the conference is that consumers and our students here, uh, if we don't build a construct logo, <coughs> they can connect uh, with the postmodern, with um, you know, that, that power, because they'll probably reject or ignore it. Um, and uh, as we build that, uh, uh, I'll turn it back over to Michael. And he can talk about the methodology that we went through in trying to build uh, a sign uh, or a logo for our department. Thank you, Pete. Thank you, Dean. So our job is to create a logo. We're at Campbell University. As I said, it's Baptist University. We're all really pleased to be here. I want to publicly thank uh, Campbell for uh, underwriting this trip. And so we're trying to capture some of the qualities of Campbell University with its mission statement and our own particular values in the Department of Communication Studies, Sasser. And so we looked at universities near us. We went to, we looked at a state university 120 miles south of us. We went to a private university 100 miles northwest of us. This university, University of North Carolina in Wilmington, has as, a, as its chair Dr. Rich Olson, who is a great friend. He's a believer, and he's working, <coughs> pardon me, at a state university and so he wanted to uh, have a logo that captures what they're trying to do, uh, particularly at the uh, secular college level. So he chose the five canons of Aristotle. I should actually say his students chose the five canons of Aristotle. He made it a competition. It was a workshop. Students came up with this uh, wordless, no, no text, but uh, very graphic image. So we have invention, arrangement, style, memory, and delivery represented by the five circles, plus eight sub-areas that are the competencies associated with his university, confidence, intellectual curiosity, responsibility, collaboration, critical thinking, problem solving, civility, and praxis. So if you look, you could see one, two, three, four circles, clearly a center circle, and then if you count the where the circles overlap, it comes up to be eight. And the way they use this is at least once a year, Rick, as the chairman of a, a fabulous uh, faculty and a great a group of students, too, he talks to the students and says, here are the things that we share in common. So most of us uh, occasionally talk about communication at its root is commune, which means to share. Here's what we share in common. So he uses that to unite the students, create some solidarity. And also, it helps when you need to say, here's what we're trying to do. And what you're doing doesn't contribute to what we're trying to do. So it, it, it helps in that way, too. There is a, a logo, no words, but here's a different one, Elon University. It's a high-quality university in our area. It was rated as uh, number one in the southeast. They have more than 1,000 students 
in their program, at least 45 faculty and staff, big program, high quality program. And they created the Elon 11. Elon was accredited and they had, as, as part of the accreditation process, uh, a need to somehow say in a, a compressed way who they are, what they're trying to do. So we have a word cloud. The word freedom is the dominant word. And Dean Paul Parsons created this Elon 11, and he was pleased that that was the word that you see from a distance. What we tend to do with these kind of things is post them in the classrooms or strategic places so people can see. So if you were a student in a classroom, this may not be in the front of the classroom, but it would be nearby. At a glance, you see freedom. So you see that that's a value at Elon that they want students to know, and faculty as well. If you read the value statements, the top is truth, accuracy, and fairness, followed by freedom of expression, ethical ways of thinking, history and roles of media in society, diversity of audiences, and a global age. So diversity was added recently, but you see all these statements are, have kind of equal value, all, even though uh, truth is positioned at the top. And then these competencies, write clearly and accurately, You'll use the tools of technology, apply theories in presenting images and information, engage in research and critical evaluation, understand data and statistics, think creatively and analytically. So these are the, the values they share, and, and Dean Paul Parsons said that what he tries to do is uh, use it for course corrections. If you have a student that's going out uh, in an extreme way, you can reel that student back in. But again, I think the value is probably as much for the faculty to say, let's remember, here's what we're trying to do. So we took the idea of the logo, no words, and this uh, image, which mostly is words, and tried to combine them. Can you see the iPad frame around that? It didn't jump out at me adventure, uh, at first, so it took a while to catch on. So, uh, and that's not that important for them. They just wanted to have something that suggests cutting edge. Uh, so they went with that. We, on the other hand, uh, tried to uh, put, put both together, and we'll, we'll tell you how successful this was. We did a, a kind of a focus group with our students, and uh, we used uh, a list of statements. Then uh, that's Dr. Uh, Farmer came up with this list of statements based on our mission. And then I added the compass, and I put some words uh, in a, a different location. I was going for the N North E, East, W, West, and S, South, N, E, W, S, News, as a kind of uh, passive way to talk about the detached communication that we do. I'm not sure it really works. Uh, then we negotiated a little bit, and um, we, we worked it around. Dr. Farm, why don't you jump in here and talk a little bit about that, and then uh, tell us the findings and how the students reacted, if you would, please. Um, thanks, Mike. As, as uh, Mike was, was saying there, um, you know, we were trying to take the best of both worlds at, at, uh, in this work in progress here. Um, and I came up with a list of statements. Uh, 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 Michael worked in with the idea uh, of the compass and trying to connect, you know, the statements uh, with the things that we value here at Campbell. Um, Connecting with our university's mission statement, uh, with the, the fact that we are uh, very proud and uh, and support strongly our, our Baptist heritage, and especially our Christian heritage, more so than that. But connecting university art, the logo to the Campbell mission statement, and also um, by putting our communication <coughs> human communication central um, in, the, in the center of the compass to give direction. Um, but uh, as Michael's looking, this is a work in progress. We're testing it out with students and doing focus groups with them. Um, I know that uh, one of the goals that we had was to develop, uh, whether or not Marge would like it or not, uh, a sign with minted qualities uh, that would have a uh, means to transcend 
things uh, emerged uh, back to, you know, uh, I was talking earlier about uh, signs that don't approach that. Uh, I love what one of our students said um, in the little uh, impromptu focus group was that this thing looks black. Uh, that, the, that the words dominate, sometimes the, uh, the compass gets lost, and yet another person in the same focus group says that the compass stuck out and, you know, that it could see the meaning that, you know, that a compass gives direction in life. Um, you know, we heard words of fluttery, uh, you know, we heard that the, the font that was used for the text, and, you know, this is the death knell and all things graphic. It almost looked like it was comic sand, which it's not, by the way. But, um, but is there ways that we can use it as watermark? written, uh, but very polysemic meanings uh, arrive out of it. Um, and looking at what uh, Rick Olson uh, said in some of the stuff, um, you know, in looking at what Stu said, what he said, that, uh, that, you know, that arguments about successful communication is bound, inextricably bound in human relationships, going back to uh, Stuart's arguments back in the mid 80s, uh, that uh, communication can make the world rather than just representing it. And that's part of, you know, we're trying to make that linkage here is to represent our department, the world of our department. And I think that, you know, that communication making the world uh, is especially uh, apropos in the department of communication in Christian higher education. You know, we deal with, you know, what is communication and how do we. Where's this place in the academy, and what do y'all really do? And, it's, and I tell the biologists around here uh, that, you know, hey, God spoke the universe into existence. Check out, check the Bible, Genesis 1-3. Um, so we, uh, what we teach is of paramount importance. Um, so as this, our, our sign, our logo here is a work in progress, I look at it that it's a place to begin. So to make this a bit of a learning exercise at that group, it was actually my communication ethics class met, and, and we were able to uh, talk to them. It's a fairly big section, approximately 30 for us is big, very big. And the uh, at least two students, maybe as many as four, said, let me take a swing at that which is exciting for us that somebody would want to embrace it and see what he or she could do. And we may, uh, I'm not sure if we're going to just pay each person a token amount, $50 for whatever they come up with, maybe make it a contest or what. But, but they like the idea of the compass, that, that there's something visual that says there is a preferred direction to go. And uh, symbolically, we want to go north. And if you get a chance to read the text, it says nothing is higher than the revelatory and transcendent truth of Jesus Christ, which comes right out of our mission statement. I mean, that line alone would help us as we think through what we're trying to do. The uh, other big criticism that I think is thoughtful and we should reconsider is too many words. So if you could, at a glance, have one word that captures each of the poles, that would, that would help. Because I think, as you know, and we're hearing a lot, we're going to hear, uh, I had a chance to preview some of what's coming, we're going to, we're going to hear about uh, images and, and how they can be ambiguous, and, and for some people that's a benefit, and how you could have certain dominance, which again could be a, a benefit, and, and how to use it well, which is part of what we're trying to do in some of our communication programs the, in the applied way. So. We, we're working. We have uh, many other things. We're, we're like you. We, uh, we look at our program constantly and, and talk about curriculum issues, and, and that's always simmering on the one burner. We're thinking about some of these other things, which is, okay, now that we've agreed that here's where we're going, how can we use this on a regular basis to help keep us all going in the right direction or the same direction, and so on. So we're looking forward to the days ahead to see what, what happens. And uh, at this point, I'll uh, shoot it back to our host. And uh, again, Dr. Metz, this is really a wonderful conference you put together here. Wow, I'm really appreciative of uh, Professor Jen.
and your other colleagues, Robert Woods and all the others. Thank you. Really a delight to be with you. I, I, a little busy, isn't it? And that blue is so dramatic. It may overpower anything else. Are those the school colors? Yes. Uh, they're, they're not exactly the school colors. The blue represents communication, and it's supposed to be orange, that, that, which <coughs> we're orange and black are our colors. How many hours did it take you to create it? So... Dr. Farmer came up with a list. He heard me talk about the Elon 11. Hey, I really like the Elon 11. Can we do that in our classes? And so uh, on his own and this past summer, he, he started coming up with a list. Uh, I really don't know. I'm going to guess a couple, three, five, and then my couple, three, five. Uh, maybe not a lot. <laughs> when it's all said and done, uh, what, what would you say, Dr. Farmer, 10, 15? How many hours did this uh, uh, logo take to? Probably a, 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 day, a day at the office. And uh, just, uh, you know, tinkering, it may have been two or three days worth of work and tinkering, uh, but uh, probably if you added it all up on a, a good clock, uh, then probably a day's worth. These kind of projects are a lot, remind me of what George Bush said. You remember how he said, uh, yeah, the diplomacy is fine and good, but it takes a long time. So, you know, if each of us had worked on it, it would, it would, it would look different. But, uh, you know, there's benefit in collaboration, obviously. So, yes, Mr. Paul. No, I think uh, on an informal basis, we just met with our students last week. Uh, I did say to them as they were going out, hey, do you think you could have something by Thanksgiving? Follow up also, then you make a decision. Um, um, do you have sunset provision? In other words, uh, do you have something in place that you say, this might not work five years from now? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I feel that uh, we have one of the uh, disciplines where the, the, the classical parts of it don't change. But certainly with new media and convergence and how do you make things constantly in flux. Uh, I just read a, a journal article on the way out here about uh, communication programs and how they're constantly overhauling and we're trying to figure out how to serve our students well. So this may, this may be uh, dated. Uh, but I think, you know, sometimes it's, the exercise is helpful to just, in your own mind, figure out what, what it is that we're trying to highlight and underline. And, and certainly for our students that are coming to us from a lot of different places, we're, we, as, as I said, we're a Baptist university, but we have a spectrum of students. So this, this is helpful for them as well. Sure. You seem to have a question, sir. Yeah. At, at the close, you mentioned how uh, more burger you had in your curriculum, and intensely you're looking at the program, you made a bit of a connection to like how the logo connects to that. And I would I would challenge and I would say, can the logo reinforce or provide a greater direction towards some of the dissonant points, like working on curriculum, what direction hmm. are we going? Where is our future? Where is our past? Can you huh. bring all that together uh, as a tool? So that actually reinforces and empowers the organization. So if I'm uh, just uh, for the recording purposes. So the question is, can you use the logo to, to, to recognize that there is some uh, dissonance in the whole system, that we're always in flux and change is part of what, who we are? Did I get it right? And also uh, symbolize the direction. Yes. So that, so that it unifies. I would put that under heavy lifting, <laughs> and, and I think it's, it's quite possible. There also is a benefit, if you think back to the Nike swoosh and the, uh, the bird, the blue bird of Twitter, the, um, your image should probably do one main uh, job, and then um, you'll have to explain it later. 
that's the benefit of some of these things. I think your point is a good one. And uh, um, maybe, I guess I'd say, maybe. We're, we're, we're uh, and I'm sure there are other people in this room too, we're, we're just fortunate to get through the class every day, you know? We did not have a fire. Hey, Dean, we didn't have a fire today. Okay, good, you did your job. All right, see you later. You know, so, um, but, but it is, I think, helpful to do this kind of work. Thank you. Thank you.